If you're tired of constantly chasing after someone for their attention and affection, then make sure to stick around. In this video, we're going to reveal a game-changing technique that will have them coming to you instead. Let's be real, we've all been in situations where we feel like we're constantly chasing after someone, whether it's a crush, a friend, or even a colleague. It's exhausting and can leave us feeling frustrated and rejected. But what if we told you that there's a simple way to flip the script and get more from someone without all the chasing? Keep watching to find out. The truth is that people often have logical reasons for not investing their emotions at certain times. Maybe they need a break from being in a relationship, or there are logistical challenges that hinder them from going after you, like distance. They might also be swamped running their own business and just don't have the time. Whatever the reason, they usually have good explanations for why they can't give what the other person is looking for or act a certain way. On the flip side, such scenarios often remind us of the saying, they're just not that into you. When you wonder why your crush isn't making a move, for instance, some folks might say it's simple. They just aren't that interested in you. But for others, it feels way more complicated. They might say the person is sending you mixed signals, showing interest one minute and ghosting the next. So there's still that slim chance of them being interested in you. You can get pretty tangled up with confusing messages from both sides, right? In the end, you often find yourself stuck in this web of mixed signals. To turn things around, you suggest a compromise. Say the person you're into tells you, we can't be together because you're too busy with work. So you reply, hey, how about I take care of this and you handle that so that we can make time on weekends? Sounds good, right? Well, not really. You've set expectations in your mind about what could happen between you and the other person. It's risky because in relationships or dating, instead of letting things naturally unfold, you've already written the script. By doing this, you set yourself up for disappointment if reality doesn't match your expectations. People do this all the time, even before their first date. They meet someone, get asked out, and right away, they check out the person's social media. Impressed by what they see, they think, wow, this is exactly the kind of person I want. We could really have something great. And yet, they haven't even gone on a date with them yet. What happens here is that our mind uses the 5% we know to spin a story for the other 95%. The result? We often feel hurt, even heartbroken, so quickly. Some people even wonder, am I losing my mind? I've only been on one date, but I'm already feeling heartbroken because things are not the way I imagined. What's going on here is we've created a story we want to happen. So now we look for any way to make it come to life. By the way, make sure to subscribe if you've learned something new today. The thing is that our brains make so many calculations of how we can make the stories we envisioned a reality, but we do it in the other direction. And one of those ways is to chase the person we're interested in. When your insecurities pop up, like when the person you like goes out and doesn't text for a couple of hours, your mind can start to wander. You might think, who are they talking to? They're at that party. And since I haven't heard from them in hours, they must be chatting with someone attractive. Are they flirting? This train of thought makes you create a whole new story in your head. And suddenly, you're reacting to that instead. Guess what? Our reactions to the narratives we've created come from our past. This includes the history, wounds, trauma, and beliefs we've picked up along the way. Basically, we aren't reacting to what's happening right now, but to our past. The current situation just triggers old experiences, causing us to guess what'll happen next based on them. That's why instead of being curious about new situations, even with the people we like, we often jump in with preconceived ideas. So stop chasing after someone to make the story you created a reality. Instead, slow down the story that's happening. How? Focus on what really matters. Instead of valuing potential or future possibilities between you and the person you like, start appreciating what's happening between you two right now. And one thing that can help is knowing where you are in the four stages of a relationship. The first stage is all about pure admiration. You look at them and think, Wow, this person is amazing. They have everything I want. It's admiration at its finest. That doesn't mean admiration requires any back and forth. You can admire someone you've never met, right? Sometimes you can even admire someone you just see online. But let's be real. 
Admiration can get blown out of proportion. You can be excited because you find someone interesting, but that excitement shouldn't be about any shared experiences yet. Remember that, at this point, there's nothing happening between you two just yet. Often, the same is true with the second stage, which is connection or chemistry. That's where mutual admiration kicks in. At this stage, you both feel something special. But the thing is, you can have this with lots of people, and it doesn't always mean there's a deeper emotional connection, does it? Unfortunately, this is where people get caught up. For instance, many women often share frustrating stories about some men, like how they put in little effort and act disrespectfully. What they might not realize is that their unmet expectations come from thinking they had a deep connection with these guys. But really, it's just a connection. And they can have that with anyone, not only the person they're drawn to. The next two stages are different. They're the game changers. After connection comes commitment. It's when you and the other person decide to be together, basically saying, do you want to be with me? Yes, I want to be with you. All right, we're doing this. That's when the real commitment starts between both of you. But you should not stop at that. You still consider the next stage, which is compatibility. Besides chemistry, connection, and commitment, you both need to be on the same page about how you see your lives unfolding, especially considering where you each are right now. That said, one reason that relationships with big age gaps struggle is because the people involved are at different life stages. Sure, these relationships can work, but they often face compatibility issues despite the chemistry. For example, one person might love nightlife and drinking, while the other prefers hiking and a healthy lifestyle, enjoying mornings over nights. These different preferences can create challenges. They're devoted to each other, but not totally compatible. Sadly, that's why a lot of relationships end. Remember this. When two people decide to start investing in their relationship with each other, it's like a couple choosing to construct a house on a piece of land. They pour their resources into this land, making it their own. Together, they decide on all the unique details that will make the house distinctly theirs. There are many ways to build a house, but this approach is uniquely theirs, and that's what makes it special. The problem is, a lot of people jump way ahead and picture the house as if it's already built. In reality, all they've got is a dream or some blueprints the other person might not even know about. So, stop chasing after someone in hopes of making your vision a reality. Instead, appreciate the present with the person you like. You'll get more out of them when you go through each stage of a relationship. And that's how you can have a relationship worth keeping. And if you liked this video, then check out these related videos to see more. And make sure to subscribe and leave a comment saying, I subscribed, and we will personally reply to your comment.